Get a DSLR, you can get a range finding camera. This, these are Leicas, they're expensive, but there's plenty of affordable and cool camera. You have one in your pocket. Every single person has one. The place where you're headed with all this is that every single filmmaker, you're the prism that the thing goes through. So every single person could hold this camera up and everyone would take a different picture with it. And that's awesome. That's a beautiful thing. How you doing? And welcome to this video. And in this video, we're going to talk about shooting Hollywood type movies on a budget. Now, there's been a lot of talk about this film called The Creator, which was apparently shot on an FX3. And it looks amazing. I'm not going to lie. Looking at the trailer, it looks absolutely amazing. But that's something that I've always harped on about on this channel, that you can shoot amazing quality footage with basically any of the modern cameras that are out there. Whether you're shooting on a Sony, a Lumix, a Canon, all of them have the capacity to give you Hollywood level type film. It's an amazing time to be a cinematographer. But just because they shot that on an FX3, it doesn't mean that you're going to get the same type of image. Or does it? <laughs> so in this video, I want to do something crazy. I want to see if I can produce some Hollywood type imagery on a small camera, such as the Sony FX30 with an APS-C sensor. It's dubbed as a cinema line camera, so hopefully it does the job. Now, the person that I've used as an example is Zack Snyder. Whether you love or you hate Zack Snyder, you've got to admit his films are absolutely stunning. They're absolutely amazing. There's a lot of other DPs and, and directors that people look up to, like Roger Deakins, for example. But me personally, I look up to Zack Snyder because it's not that I particularly like his films because they're kind of gory. I just like the way that they're shot and the way that they're edited. And he's a risk taker. And he's right up my street in terms of how he likes to make films and visually how he likes to present them. From Sucker Punch, which had absolutely amazing cinematography, to films like The Watchmen. And now we're going to talk about Army of the Dead. So Army of the Dead is absolutely insane. And I don't watch gory films, to be honest. I don't watch no horror films, killing and all that kind of stuff. But what drew me to this film was on the groups, specifically the Black Magic Camera Group, people were talking about how the Boca was insane and it's stupid. Why did he shoot like this? And all of that kind of stuff. So obviously going against the grain, I wanted to find out what is exactly what he did. So I watched the film and it was insane. The Boca was insane. The focal plane, what he was working with was absolutely insane. With that Canon Dream Lens, the 50 millimeter 0.95, he took on a big risk shooting that film. And he said it himself that it's, it, you know, when he wanted to do this film, it was best if he shot it himself because he knew that it was gonna be crazy to shoot. I don't have a Red Monstro full frame 8K sensor that costs 80,000 pounds or whatever brand new. And I don't have a Canon Dream Lens because those are very expensive as well. If you get the normal version, you can get it for around two grand in good condition. If you get the TV lens version, which is best for the conversion, they're up to anywhere, anywhere up to to about seven thousand pounds so it's very expensive instead we're going to do it on a budget setup which is the fx30 and the mica 50 millimeter f1.2 lens so this lens is actually black it was black before but i stripped it all off and made it silver because i wanted to have something that looked really different kind of like a vintage lens and this is one of my favorite lenses with this particular lens i really loved it from the first time i used it on weddings and stuff like that i absolutely loved this fast aperture so I wanted to take this lens and build it up into a dream lens. And I did that by using a few different accessories. So let's build it up now. So the first thing we're going to put on is a Metabone Speed Booster. Now this is a Sony E mount to EF. And these can be picked up quite cheap now because a lot of people don't adapt Sony lenses. So I picked this up for £150 in excellent condition. So now we've gone from like a 1.2 to, I don't know, probably a 0 0.9 or something like that, 0 0.95, absolutely insane, full frame. Then we're gonna need a couple of step-up rings. So my first step-up ring is gonna be a 67 to 72. Then I'm gonna go with a Tiffin variable ND. You don't have to use Tiffin, but just make sure you get one that's good quality because you're gonna be shooting at a very shallow depth of field, basically wide open. If you've got a cheap ND with scratches on it or it doesn't resolve very well, it's gonna mess up your bokeh and then your bokeh is gonna look a bit like too busy. You know, it's, gonna, it's not gonna look good. So that's that on there. Then because of the size of the, this Tiffin, I need to put a step up, a step down ring, sorry. So that's 82 to 77, so it's stepping down. And then the last thing we're gonna put on is a Tiffin Black Pro Mist, one fourth. So that is, yeah, that is insane. One fourth Tiffin Black Pro Mist, one fourth. A lot of people don't like this Tiffin because it's, it's very strong, but I love it. In the daytime, it's absolutely amazing. Nighttime, yes, it can bloom a lot, but in the daytime, it's absolutely amazing. 
So there we go. That is my version of the Canon Dream Lens. <laughs> Absolutely insane. This lens will cost you about 300 quid. Speed Booster, if you buy one used, about 150, so that's about 450. And then, like I said, you don't necessarily have to use Tiffin, you can use a good brand. So 455, so maybe about, and a Black Pro Mist, maybe about 600 pounds, maybe 650, maybe you got that in there. But compared to a, a Dream Lens, even like the basic version, you're saving a lot of money. Okay, that's gonna be insanely hard to shoot with. The second thing I need, I'm gonna need a bit of lighting. So the only lights I'm gonna use are these two here, these two tube lights from Luxio. Absolutely amazing, I've had these for a while now. Very cheap, you can find these on AliExpress for about 25 pounds and about 35 or 40 pounds. And these are the ones that I used on the Sony Cinematic Beast video. Just two lights I had on there. So absolutely amazing. And then we're gonna need a follow focus because some of the shots is, is gonna be hard to pull. So I'm gonna need that on there for a couple shots. But I'm gonna put that to the side because that's not 100% necessary. But what is necessary is a monitor. Now, because you're gonna be shooting really, really shallow depth of field, you're gonna need something that allows you to nail that razor sharp focus. And this is the Andy Cine A6 Max. Really love this monitor from Andy Cine and I'm so happy that they sent it for me to use. And yeah, so it's time to hit the road, let's go. Look at this guy here doing what he does best, you know what I'm saying? Look at this, the main man, Cole. <laughs> yeah, well, yo, Cole, good. what's up? What are you up to, man? Right, what are you so doing now? I've got the Andy Cine monitor. Nice. And you can see it's mad bright out here. So I can't really see anything on the on this small Sony screen. And shooting at, you know, under F, F1.0 is just madness. So I'm setting up the monitor now. The monitor is only 500 nits. So thankfully they include this um, sun hood and attachment here which allow me to see everything outside. But coming there, I want to show you something quickly. It's pure reflection. So the way you put the um, clip on is, you just put this over the top here and it clips on easy like that. And then sun hood, just Velcro's on straight like that. So now you've got a nice sunshade. So the 500 nits isn't too bad. Still getting a lot of reflection there, but trust me, I can see. <laughs> uh, in yeah. your old age, yeah? In my old age, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Round one, fight. Okay, so that's it. Very minimal gear that you saw that I had here. Just a little bit of gear can get you some Hollywood type footage. Yes, I know, I already said it's not perfect. You know, these films have big teams working on them. But if you just give it a little bit of time, effort, know-how and study, you can produce Hollywood looking visuals as well. So guys, I hope you had fun watching this video. I had, I had fun making it, but it was really tough, man. I don't think I'd ever do it again because matching my footage to a Hollywood type film that cost 90 million, it was hard. It was really hard. That gunshot scene took me like three and a half hours just to try and get it in a similar ballpark in terms of color. If I was doing my own types of footage, then it would have been easy for me to grade, but copying another grade is much harder but that's the only way you learn so guys again i hope you had fun watching this video take care and i'll see you on the next video later